Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS 12.3 to the public. This is available to all macOS 12 supported devices, so if you were able to install it before, you'll be able to install this update as well. Now, along with this, Apple also released iOS 15.4, iPadOS 15.4, watchOS 8.5, tvOS 15.4, and HomePodOS 15.4. All of those are available now. Now this particular update came in at 4.38 gigabytes. That's on an M1 MacBook Pro 16 inch. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple, click about this Mac. And as you can see here, the build number, if we click on 12.3 is 21E230. Now, if you're a developer or public beta tester, this is the same as the release candidate. So you just had it a little bit early and you can basically remove the beta profile if you want, opt out of being a beta tester, and you'll just already be on the final version. Now, as far as what's new in this update, well, the first thing is universal control. Universal control allows you to control not only a Mac, but an iPad and maybe another Mac using the same set of keyboard and mouse. And you can see preferences for this under displays, in your preferences. So as you can see here, we have universal control. And if you turn on, allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac or iPad, you can actually use this and just move your cursor to the edge. Let me show you exactly how that works. Now that universal control is enabled on the MacBook, in order to use it on your other devices, such as another Mac or an iPad or an iPad and another Mac up to three devices, we need to make sure it's turned on there as well. On an iPad, you can find it under settings, general, and then airplay and handoff. You'll see it says cursor and keyboard beta. So it's technically still in beta, but as long as that's turned on, it should work. Now to enable it, you just need to be on the same Wi-Fi network and the same Apple ID. So I'm going to take my cursor on my Mac, go to the right, and drag it over into the iPad. You'll see it sort of pops through, keep going. And now we're controlling the iPad cursor with the MacBook as well. And this works the other direction also. So if we have a magic trackpad or a magic keyboard with the trackpad, we can go back and forth. So now I'm controlling it on the Mac and you'll see this here. And maybe I want to take a file such as this screenshot and drag it over to the iPad. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. It is in beta. So you'll see that if I grab it with the Mac and do the same thing, I can just drag it across. So it does work a little bit differently from time to time, but it seems to work fairly stably, but it is in beta currently. Also, it works with third party keyboards, trackpads, and mice. So if you're using maybe an Apple magic trackpad or a magic mouse or a keyboard or a Microsoft mouse. Any of those will just work seamlessly across the devices. So it's a really great feature that it's finally here and it seems to be working just fine. So there are a bunch of different devices that are supported and it goes back quite a ways as well. So here's all the supported devices if you want to try this out. And I think it's a great feature to have. It's different than sidecar in that it's not another monitor. It's full control of both devices using one set of keyboards and controls. So such as a mouse or trackpad. Now within this update and iOS updates as well, there are new emoji. Every year, Apple updates their emoji to line up with what Unicode has. So this is Unicode version 14. They create what emoji will be out and then Apple updates to basically meet a standard. So you'll see this from Apple and Microsoft and Android as well. And as you can see, there's 37 new ones. So everything from an X-ray to bubbles to an ID card down here, you've got a palm facing down, a palm facing up and some new smiley faces or new round face emojis where you have a melting face and some others as well. So there's some new ones here. And of course you can change the colors of them to whatever your preference is. Now, if you're using AirPods on a new M1 based Mac, M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, or M1 Ultra, or any future version, we now have head tracking or dynamic head tracking using AirPods. So I've got AirPods three here. If your AirPods support it or your headphones support it, and then maybe you click on the control center, click on sound, you'll see it'll bring you over to your audio options. And it says spatial audio. If spatial audio is available, since I'm not playing any music, you won't see it here, but if spatial audio is available, you'll have he dynamic head tracking and you'll also have the option to turn it to off fixed or head tracked. So those will be options. You'll see if you're playing music that support it, otherwise you won't see it, but I'm recording the screen. You'll see it kind of just popped up there as I took my AirPods out, but that gives you an idea. So you'll have that option now within your Mac, but it has to be an M1 based Mac. Within this update, we also have a new Siri voice, just like we do on iOS. So if we go into our preferences, go to Siri, scroll down just a little bit, you'll see voice five. So voice five is all new. So take a listen. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. 
I'll play it one more time. Let me turn it up a little bit more. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. And so we have that all new voice. I typically choose the traditional one, but you can choose whatever you'd like. And of course, it's always nice to have an addition. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. In this update, Apple has also improved the battery algorithm so that it's more accurate. So battery, you'll see battery health, and maximum capacity is at 100%. But Apple has said battery capacity readings have improved accuracy in this update. Now let's go ahead and click OK, and we'll go into podcasts. So if we go into podcasts here, you can see we get a new splash screen that says, welcome to Apple podcasts. We can filter episodes and now we can browse by season. So now if we go into shows, you'll see we have against all odds and now we have seasons. So you can browse by season here, just making it a little easier to find podcasts if there's a ton of them based off of year or season. So that's something that's new. Also, Safari web pages add some new translation options. Within Safari, we have some new translation options. So you can see we're on Apple's French website. If I click this little icon here, we can now translate to English. However, we have the option, if we already have the language set up on our Mac, to translate now to Italian and traditional Chinese. So those are new options that you'll find if you have those already set up for your preferred languages. Also, if we go into shortcuts, there's some changes there. Within shortcuts, you'll see I have get text from input. It's just a test one here that I created, and it says get tags from reminder. We can now get tags and search or create a shortcut based off of those directly from a reminder. Now there's also some updates in Keychain. So if we go into Keychain or passwords, within Keychain, you can see I've created a test password and we can now leave notes. So this is a note about the password. So it's a nice little option. It carries across different platforms as well, such as iPhone and iPad. In the TV app, there's a small change. If we go to TV, and then TV and preferences, you'll see here up next display, we have still frame or poster art. And it says, choose the show or movie art displayed in your up next on channel page. Still frame, show a paused image from what's playing. Poster art will show the promotional title image. So we can change this back and forth and it will update across not only the TV app, but iOS, iPad, and an Apple TV. There's also a fix when maybe you're playing audio from that TV app where it could become distorted. They've actually resolved that in this update. There's also a couple other things they've resolved. And the next one has to do with the today view. Maybe when you're using the news widget, maybe you click on a news article. You'll see here one from the wall street journal or nine to five Mac. We'll click on one here and it wouldn't open properly. Now it will open properly when you click on the widget. Additionally, Apple has resolved an issue where some photos and videos may be unintentionally moved when organizing albums and photos. And so that's been fixed within this update. So maybe you were moving something around in photos and they weren't going where you thought you put them. This should resolve that issue. Also, there's additional security updates. There's actually quite a few. So if we go to Apple's security website, scroll down, you can see all of the security updates they released along with this, such as macOS Big Sur 11.6.5. But if we click on macOS Monterey 12.3, we can see the updates for this operating system. So everything from acceleration or accelerate framework, AMD, AppKit, and so on. So we'll keep going. You'll see there's some kernel updates. There's also GarageBand updates and Sandbox and Safari system preferences. So in order to read this, you can see it says available for Mac OS Monterey impact is an app may be able to spoof system notifications and UI the description or the way they've fixed it is this issue was addressed with a new entitlement. And so you can also see who, who submitted this problem. Guy Rambo, if you've ever heard of him, he submitted this and Apple in turn fixed the problem. So it's great to see them resolving so many security issues. And so that brings me to, should you install this update? Mac OS 12.3. And the answer is absolutely if you're already on Mac OS Monterey. If you haven't updated to the latest set of Mac OS, then maybe you want to hold off. It's really up to you. But if you're on Mac OS 12 already or any version before this one, I would definitely install this update. You'll get the latest security updates as well as a few additional benefits and universal control. Now, I really would not expect any additional major feature changes until we see Mac OS 13 at WWDC. Typically, we'll see that in June, usually around the time of iOS 16 betas, I almost said 15. So iOS 16 betas 
watch OS 9 and so on. Then we'll see those released to the public, usually in late September. So don't expect any major changes until then, but right now we're just seeing refinements and things getting better and better. So that's everything with Mac OS 12.3 Monterey. Of course, there's some other small changes here and there, but they're pretty minor overall. I mentioned all the major things Apple has updated in this version of the OS. If you found anything else major though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.